Hello, in this video we're going to look at Corneau with differentiated products. So say you're given a setup like this, firm one's demand, where one represents the output of firm one, and two represents the uh, firm two. So firm one's demand is given by this equation, firm two's demand is given by this equation. So you might have this setup maybe if you're doing Bertrand competition with differentiated products, so you might first solve that problem, okay, given this setup, uh, assuming Bert Bertrand competition with differentiated products, you know, find the, the price that firm one charges, price that firm two charges, find their respective outputs, and so on. But what we want to do with this setup, again, is find the Carnot outcome, which is a quantity competition model with differentiated products. So uh, we're going to first assume each firm has a marginal cost structure that is constant at $20, or MC equals 20. The key in this is we need to get each firm's inverse demand as a function of its output and the other firm's output, the rival's output. So in other words, we want to get these equations up here into the following form. Price of firm 1 is a function of firm 1's output and firm 2's output, and that's it. Okay. Uh, so step one, I'm going to solve firm one's demand. Okay, this equation up here, I'm going to solve it for P subscript one. So here again is firm one's demand. I'm going to simplify it and solve it for P subscript one. So the first thing I do is I multiply everything through by three. Okay, so that's where the three Q subscript one is coming from. Uh, 3 times 200 divided by 3 is just 200, etc. So first step, multiplying everything through by 3. Uh, the second step, I move this minus 4p subscript 1 over to the left-hand side. And then I subtracted 3q subscript 1 and move that over to the right-hand side. The next step is I'm going to divide everything through by 4. So 200 divided by 4 is 50. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half, and so on. And so we get this equation. We're not done. Uh, again, we want to get firm 1's uh, uh, inverse demand is just a function of output, of its output and the other firm's output. So we're not there yet. So step 2, uh, we're going to basically do the same thing that we just did in step 1, but this time we're going to solve firm 2's demand for P subscript 2. So this is going to be, again, the identical step that we just did in step one, but this time from the perspective of firm two. So here for, here's firm, firm two's demand, multiplying everything through by three. Okay, we get this, moving some things around, once again dividing by four. This essentially becomes a mirror image of the price equation we found in step one. Okay, so step three. From, to summarize, from step one and step two, we got the following equations, price equations for firm one and firm two. What are we going to do now is we're going to substitute P, the P subscript two equation into the P subscript one equation. So here's firm one's price equation where I have this P subscript two. I'm plugging in this 50 plus one half P subscript one minus this three fourths Q subscript two. So just substituting one equation into the other. And now we're going to take this equation and solve for P subscript 1, firm 1's price. Okay, so just rewriting that equation. And again, reminding us we're going to solve for P subscript 1. First thing I do is I'm going to multiply this 1 half through by what's in parentheses. So 1 half times 50 is 25. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, okay, P subscript 1, and then 1 half minus 3 fourths gives us 3 eighths uh, Q subscript 2, and then we still have this minus 3 fourths Q subscript 1 term hanging around. Uh, the next step here, I add 50 plus 25, that's where the 75 is coming from, and the next, where this 3 fourths P subscript 1 come from? P subscript 1 minus 1 fourth P subscript 1. Okay, I just subtracted minus 1 fourth P subscript 1 from both sides, giving us this result. And then the next step, I multiplied everything through. 
the left hand side and the right hand side by four thirds. Okay, so four thirds times seventy five um, is a hundred. Four thirds minus th uh, multiplied by a negative three eighths um, gets us minus one half, and, and so on. So that equation just simplifies something something like this. Fairly nice. And now we do the same thing, but this time we're going to, again, here's our equations from step three. We're going to do sort of a reverse substitution. So we're now going to substitute P subscript one into the equation for P subscript two. So here's the P subscript two equation, the price equation for firm two, where I have this P subscript one. I'm plugging in what I'm circling right here. So doing that and then simplifying for P subscript two. So again, just rewriting a very similar math here. Okay, multiplying this one half through by what's in parentheses, adding the constant terms, subtracting the one fourth P subscript two from both sides, and then multiplying everything through by four thirds. We get the mirror image of the equation we just solved for uh, so here's the P subscript 2 equation. And again, we achieved our goal in that P subscript 2 is just a function of its output and the rival firm's output. So step 4. Okay, reminding us from step 3, we got these results. And now we're ready to do some uh, profit maximization. Let's construct firm 1's total revenue. Firm 1's total revenue is its price multiplied by its output. We got Firm 1's price given by this equation here. And we're going to just multiply by its output. So I'm making a substitution. What is P subscript 1? It's this mess up here. And that's going to be all multiplied again by Firm 1's output. So rewriting that total revenue equation. And now just multiplying everything through in parentheses by Firm 1's output. We get this result, and now we can take a partial derivative to get marginal revenue. So taking that partial derivative, uh, we get 100. Here we're just left with minus 1 half Q subscript 2. And bringing the 2 down in front here from taking the derivative, we get minus 2 Q subscript 1. To maximize profits, we're going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Uh, we said marginal cost was constant for both firms at $20, so setting marginal revenue equal to $20. We're going to solve for Q subscript 1. Excuse me. So setting marginal re revenue equal to marginal cost and solving for Q subscript 1. Okay, I do that over here. Uh, I just subtracted 20 from both sides, so minus 20 from 100 leaves us 80 over here. Uh, adding 2Q subscript 1 to both sides, we get this result. Dividing through by 2, we get firm 1's reaction function. I'll go through the math for firm 2's reaction function, but essentially firm 2's reaction function will be the mirror image of this. So for firm 2, uh, the output of firm 2 will equal 40 minus 1 fourth the output of firm 1. Nevertheless, let me show you the steps for doing that. So continue a continuation of step 4. So again, from step 3, we got the following. Uh, we are going to get firm 2's total revenue, its price times its output, making the substitution. Okay, we get this. Uh, simplifying. Taking a partial derivative, setting that marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, subtracting 20 from both sides. Again, I'm moving a little bit fast here. Uh, uh, feel free to pause it if you need to. Uh, bringing the, uh, adding 2Q subscript 2 to both sides and dividing through by 2, we have firm 2's reaction function. Step five, 
Okay, so for step five, uh, from step four, we got the reaction functions. We got two equations and two unknowns. We're going to substitute firm two's reaction function into firm one's reaction function. So doing that, here's firm one's reaction function, where I have the Q subscript two. I'm plugging in firm two's reaction function. And it's a matter of solving for firm one's output now. So simplifying this, we get this result. I'm going to subtract 1 16th Q subscript 1 from both sides. That's where this 15, uh, 15 16th Q subscript 1 is coming from. And then this will just simplify down to the output of firm 1 equals 32. Plugging that into firm 2's reaction function. Here's firm 2's reaction function. Since firm 1 is going to produce 32, we see that firm 2 will also produce 32 units of output. And finally, to get the prices, we have those price equations that we solved for. Okay, so we've seen these before. Just plug in 32 and 32 for each firm's output. And in this case, each firm will charge a price of $52 per unit. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.